Kyrie Irving has done the unthinkable and his actions have shocked everyone. It is no secret that before the season, Kyrie had become one of the NBA's most controversial players to the point where ESPN even gave the Mavericks a D grade for trading for him, saying, based on Irving's track record of becoming unhappy with his team at inopportune moments, I wouldn't risk my superstar player's prime betting on him. This was a man who between 2020 and 2023 averaged 27 points per game, which didn't matter. Before this trade, Stephen A. Smith was far more blunt, telling Kyrie he should retire. Let me say this straight up and down. I think Kyrie Irving should retire. I think he should announce his retirement today. Clearly, you don't want to play basketball bad enough. The media were also not the only people who gave up on Kyrie. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, one of the most respected men in basketball, said, honestly, there's little hope that Irving will change because he's insulated by fame and money and surrounded by yes people. Yikes. The thing is, Kyrie has turned it around to the point where his long-term legacy could be affected forever. I have so many words to praise Kyrie that I end up with absolutely none. He's the most gifted player the NBA has ever seen. But what did Kyrie do to not only turn around his perception, but now playing in the NBA Finals to become one of the most successful basketball players on earth. Well, what's up, Mike here, and they say winning cures everything. So we know that winning is a factor here. In order to win, though, you need to produce. Headed into the Western Conference Finals, all eyes were on Anthony Edwards, as many said he was about to become the face of the NBA and was close to Michael Jordan's son. Edwards did a lot of talk before the series and during it at first. Until, as a second option to Luka, Kyrie outscored Ant himself as Kyrie put up 27 points a game to Ant's 24.8 and shot 49% to Ant's 40.6% shooting. How did Kyrie morph back again into an NBA superstar? Well, the thing is, we need to realize that while this was impressive, this kind of play was also nothing new. Currently, at the age of 32, Kyrie has had two of the best scoring series of his career. His scoring outputs against the Clippers and the Timberwolves are only beaten by his three series that took place at the time of his top seasons with the Cavs. Many consider that his apex prime, of course that included his famous 2016 NBA Finals. In between his current success and his past success, we had the Boston Celtic and Brooklyn Net years. The fact that Kyrie is currently playing at a higher level in Dallas is extremely notable, as it shows us that it's not just off the court that Kyrie has changed. On the stat sheet, it is very clear, Kyrie's play has improved too, and we can attribute this to one thing. Some would say the unthinkable thing Kyrie has done is that he has swallowed his pride, he has swallowed his ego, but in reality, the truth is, through his basketball and more importantly his life struggles, Kyrie Irving has grown and matured. He has found that it is not enough to just play like a star and go home when you're a franchise guy. You need to be a leader, you need to be a dependable teammate, you need to be dependable in general, and Kyrie has faced these struggles throughout his career head on, he has looked them on the face, and he has taken them down. That is a scary thought for anyone who is not a Dallas Mavericks fan, as if we go back to Kyrie's playoff scoring list, we also find the real hard evidence as to why many gave up on Kyrie in the first place. Yes, we had the off-court drama. We also had the 2022 playoffs, where Kyrie had a chance for a revenge-type situation against the Boston Celtics, and Game 1 was just completely out of hand. This environment was ridiculous. The Nets were expected to put up some kind of fight with both Kyrie and Durant playing, but instead, this series became part of the Nets' catastrophic dismantle. Game 1 would end like this. Brown the drive. Jalen Brown kicks it out. Smart fakes. Inside. Tatum spins. As against this pressure in general, Kyrie averaged just 21.3 points per game. He was, to put it very bluntly, not the guy that we see in Dallas today. And this was only one series, sure, but in a five game series loss playing for the Celtics against the Milwaukee Bucks in the second round of the playoffs, Kyrie shot just 35.6% from the field, took over 20 shots a game, and averaged just 20.4 points. Regardless, after the series, Irving publicly told Celtics fans he was going to stay. But there will be more space is up there. Kyrie, how important is it to see number 11 up there one day? It's uh, it's quite important, and uh, I'm, I appreciate that scout I joined in, but I shared it with some of my teammates as well as the organization and everyone else in Boston. If you guys will have me back. I plan on re-signing here next year. Oh! Only just a few months later, Kyrie would leave Boston for Brooklyn in a move that had everyone just scratching their heads. Why even say you're going to stay if you're only going to backstab that franchise shortly after? 
at the end of Kyrie's time with the Boston Celtics. He had legitimate villain status, as Jalen Rose would say this before Kyrie officially left. Now we may be seeing the end of the Kyrie era in Boston right before our eyes. What are you thinking as you watch him? When you go seven for 22, you can't turn around and go eight for 22. You gotta get off the ball. And then when you go to the press conference and say, I should have took 30 shots, what do you think the other 14 guys are in the car going home saying? We can't wait till this guy gets out of here. We'll help him pack his bag. When Kyrie himself was asked about free agency that summer, despite saying that he was going to stay to Boston publicly, Kyrie would tell the media, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what's best for me in my career. I don't owe anybody harsh words and Boston fans have not been kind to him since. With that said, I think we can all agree that the harsh words said back to Kyrie over the last several years have certainly matched whatever Kyrie Irving did in that situation. The criticism that Kyrie received in Brooklyn was ridiculous. We need to remember only one year ago on Reddit, it was posted, is anyone more hated than Kyrie Irving? And the responses were brutal. The epitome of, I F up at work all the time, but I still keep my job and get what I want. One of the most talented basketball players ever who couldn't shut the F up and just play. Ruined his legacy. Nice work, Uncle Drew. I am shocked that he had any trade interest. He has proven to be a cancer and you can only plan for him to be on your team on a year to year basis. If that watching guys fanboy over Kyrie makes me think of girls who swear they can fix the dreamy bad boy. You know Kyrie is going to F up whatever team chemistry he goes to next. He's done it every team he's been on and the worst part is he's getting more efficient at it. He's doing it faster. But there are still guys waiting for this guy to blow up their team from the inside. Learn the lessons bud. It ain't worth it. It is kind of funny to read these words after Kyrie has become the second option on an NBA finals team. It is also here where we need to take a deeper look into Kyrie's mind and the reason why he has had such success after all of these comments were posted. Between the 2020 and 2023 seasons, Kyrie Irving was one of just 10 players in the league to average over 27 points per game. While the media was treating him as if he was Ben Simmons who was just destroying any team he was on and not playing, Kyrie did not run from the controversy. Instead, he went onto the court and played at a superstar level every chance he could, but nobody cared. This to me is one of the biggest reasons for Kyrie's extreme 2024 success. Kyrie was an incredible talent. He is an incredible talent. There has never been a time where he has not been an incredible talent. We've watched NBA superstars such as Damian Lillard lose in the playoffs, and when they lose, a lot of times, the team is blamed. The system is blamed. The coach is blamed. Things outside of the player's control are blamed. Kyrie has not been given any of those excuses. He has not been given any of that grace for an extremely long time. But just like any incredible talent in this league, what has been proven is that when he is in the right system, System when he is playing with the right players. Kyrie Irving not only thrives, but he is able to play basketball in the most important way possible. He is a winner. And yes, it does appear that that right system includes having a Luka Doncic, a LeBron James. It includes having another primary ball handler who can distribute as Kyrie does what he does best, score the basketball. Why though with LeBron did Kyrie demand a trade, but with Luka, Kyrie has returned to playing his best basketball, has praised Luka, and at times Kyrie looks like he is genuinely Luca's best friend. Well, remember the words of Kareem. Kyrie won't change because he's famous and surrounded by yes men. It is here where I think we need to give Kyrie Irving the ultimate credit. He has been surrounded by people like that. However, he has grown in spite of this. Kyrie's redemption arc is the most shocking story in the NBA this year. With the Cleveland Cavaliers, Kyrie won a championship and the shot he hit is forever etched in NBA history. The overwhelming majority of Cavs fans is that they love Kyrie, he brought them a championship, how could they not love him? The thing is though, in 2017, Kyrie went days without talking to his teammates during the playoffs. Days without talking to his teammates. He also did not tell LeBron that he was going to demand a trade. What he did do is tell the Cavaliers front office that if they did not trade him before the season began, he was going to get surgery that would require him to miss the season. That led to the Kyrie Irving Isaiah Thomas trade, which frankly, for the Cavaliers, is one of the worst Worst trades of all time. Why was Kyrie acting this way at this time? Well, before LeBron, Kyrie had taken the mantle as the Cavs franchise player. Yes, he was on a horrible team to be fair, but he was also the man on that team who had the mindset to be a franchise player. He played the part of a number one pick in a Team USA practice while playing for the select team. A young Kyrie famously had the confidence to call out Kobe Bryant in one on one. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Huh? You have the guard. No? You're not gonna lock me up. You're not gonna lock me up. It's over. Okay. 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 Okay.
I think you're talking to a high school kid. Then Kyrie also famously rose to the challenge against that same Olympic team, the 2012 Redeem team, by doing this. A young Kyrie had both absurd confidence and the star power to back it up. But what happens when you achieve your ultimate goal and feel nothing? I think Kyrie's statement here is the biggest insight into his mind. It shows us that he is a human who did not have everything figured out, learned from mistakes, learned from life, grew, and now became the man he is today. As after winning the championship with the Cavaliers, Kyrie said, it was like climbing up one of the tallest mountains in the world, winning a championship. And when I got up there and you realize that all of the accolades and all of the achievements, yeah, it feels good. It feels great to add that to the career. But I felt empty. We all been through it. So feeling on top of the mountain, man, after a while, I just felt like I didn't really know who I was. Can we really blame a man who felt empty inside for wanting out of the Cavaliers? I think a lot of us have felt this way at times, and I think a lot of us can sympathize with Kyrie here. The most important thing after something like this is the growth. It is going through the pain and the struggle and coming out as a better man, as a better human being that all of your teammates can depend on. And that is what Kyrie has done in Dallas. And so there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. And I also think you are really going to love this video on Luka Doncic and what Luka has done that only Michael Jordan has done in the past. Or maybe you'll love this video on Anthony Edwards and why people were comparing Ant to Michael Jordan. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. Thank you for watching. You are awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music.